Hey there, what's up guys? Welcome back to the iOS development channel, maxcodes.io. In this video, I just wanna quickly show you how to add some basic animations to views in Swift UI. Again, I'm gonna show you how to add a button and animate it in Swift UI, okay? So animations, basic animations, spring animations. We're just gonna take a look at some of the options. It's gonna be a very quick video, and we're also gonna be using state in Swift UI. Now, it's not really like a dope app we're building here, right? But hopefully this will give a few of you a little bit more information on how to use Swift UI and specifically how to animate in Swift UI, okay? So let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm just gonna call this Swift UI basic animations, right? Cause it's really basic. And uh, I'll be making a, a few of these animation videos over the course of a few days just because I've learned a lot about animations lately in Swift UI and it's they're really simple and it's just kind of a cool topic that I think will be good to make videos on over the course of a few days. Okay, and I'll also throw it on my, my podcast that I started a few days ago with the programmer, if any of you, if any of you know about my podcast, but I don't want to plug that right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first get rid of the text, and then I'm just going to throw in a button, right? Because that's really just a button you're seeing there. And I'm going to go ahead and create this button, and the action, I'm just going to have it do nothing for now. But the label, I'm going to say text, animate, animate this. Okay, I'm going to recompile it. And I don't want to compile it to my phone, but I'd rather compile it to the XR simulator. So I'm going to throw that in. Now I'm running Xcode beta three. I'm not sure what version of Xcode beta is required for animations, but I know that in, for example, beta one, it didn't have forms, but beta two had forms. So it's very possible that beta three only has animations and beta two doesn't. I don't know, just code along with me and uh, I guess you'll figure it out, right? If, it, if you need the beta three. Okay, so I'm gonna hit animate this and nothing happens, right? Now, I don't really want the canvas appearing because I'm using the simulator here. And that's one thing I noticed. Uh, maybe it wasn't with the animations I'm gonna show you, but I noticed that in the canvas here, some of the animations don't work. So I'm just using the simulator. Okay, so there's our button. Let's go ahead and let's add, let's add some properties to it, okay? I'm just gonna say dot foreground color is white so that the text will change to white. That's how you change the text to white in Swift UI is uh, text color is set with foreground color, okay? Now that we have set the text color in Swift UI to the button or text, what we're gonna do is say dot frame. And to add a frame in Swift UI, all you have to do is say width 200, height 200, and not sure what the alignment does, but <clears throat> let's go ahead and compile this and uh, let's see what it does. We shouldn't really be able to see anything though because the background color isn't really set on this button, right? So it's just kind of a white button with no background color. So what we can do is simply say dot background is a background view. Now, this tripped me up for a while because I was like, where do you set the background color in Swift UI? And it's like, oh, you just have to say background and say color dot red or something. Because apparently color is a subclass of view in, when it comes to Swift UI, okay? So technically color is a view. All right, so let's go ahead and you'll see we have our button in Swift UI here. Okay, so what we want to do is just add a few more properties. Let's just say font is a title. Okay, so font size and text size in Swift UI is a bit different. You can actually add a custom text size in Swift UI like this. We can say dot font and we can go into here and say dot and you'll see we have custom right here. Okay, so you can go ahead and say name and you can just I'm not sure what this is for. I would think it's for like the font, so like Helvetica, but you can put literally whatever and it still compiles, right? So I assume if you have a custom font in here that this will work, but it's not gonna give you a warning or error if it is not a font that exists in your app, which makes kind of sense. Okay, and then 50 is a bit too big. We could just say like 20, but if we compile that, it's either gonna retain the title or the custom font, right? Let's go ahead and just like comment out the title and recompile that and just make sure it's not the title. And I'm just adding this in here just to show you how to use custom fonts in Swift UI. Okay, you'll see that it did retain the title before. Okay, so that's an interesting kind of thing to think about in Swift UI is the flow. You'll see that when this was activated, it actually retained it, not the custom font, which is interesting. So I'm wondering if uh, we put this here and we put this here, if it will retain the size 20. Okay, so maybe we'll expect to see that smaller size. Maybe it'll be the title again. 
Okay, so it is that smaller size. So it's not that this takes precedence over this, it's just that the order matters in Swift UI. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. I want it to be title. And let's just go ahead and add a corner radius. Let's say corner radius is 12. And I wanna compile that, okay? Now, we're kind of ready to animate this kind of text we've created, right? How do we do that? Well, we need to use state for animations in Swift UI. And we also need to use those variables here in the background in corner radius. So what I'm gonna do is actually move the background right below the font, not because the order matters in this case, uh, which it might for other things. I know it does for other things, but the reason I'm moving it here is just so that we can deal with these two lines and not really be jumping around here, okay? So first thing I wanna do is go ahead and reference something like BG color. And let's go declare this up top, okay? If I could put a zero there or a circle or an O, dang, I couldn't even think of the letter. Okay, we'll say at state and we'll say var BG color, right? Is equal to, let's say by default, color.gray. And uh, we'll recompile this and uh, it should work, right? Because we have this color gray and it's kind of just being put there in the background. Okay, so you'll see it works just fine. Now, how do we kind of animate it? Well, we simply just need to first change it and then animate it. So we'll say self.bg color is equal to, let's say color.blue. So we kind of want to animate it back. Okay, so when we kind of click this button now, it's going to change the state variable bg color. And we should really mark this private because why would we be using this variable outside? Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is hit this and you'll see it kind of transitions over automatically, no animation, okay? So that works, but we wanna see the corner radius move too, and then we wanna see it animate. So what we wanna do is simply say corner radius right here, or let's just say CR just cause it's simple. And I'll copy this, paste it here, and I'll say CR is equal to 12. And then I'll say self.CR is equal to, let's say 100 to give it a circle effect, okay? Okay, so all, I do, all I've done here is said, okay, well, we wanna mark this CG float. We'll say CG float. Okay, so all I've done here is created two state variables, changed the variables on the action, and then applied them in the text. So very simple. We hit this, it automatically goes. As you can see, it's a little easier to see that it does not animate when we're using the corner radius because it kind of just jumps to it. Okay, with this button kind of fade, it almost looks like the animation, it almost looks like the color animates, but it doesn't. Okay, so you can see that it doesn't by the corner radius having changed immediately. But how do we get it back and then how do we animate it? Okay, those are the two final things we need to deal with. Well, first we wanna say, okay, it's not equal to 100, it's equal to self.cr question mark. If self.cr is equal to 12, then we will change it to 100. Let's see, self.cr is equal to 12. We will change it to 100. And if it's not, we'll change it back to 12, okay? So if we compile this now, it's gonna switch between 12 and 100 whenever we click on it, okay? Because it's gonna check it. It's gonna say, uh, self CR, it's 12, question mark? Uh, yeah, it's 12, then do 100. It's not 12, okay, um, let's change it back to 12. Okay, so you'll see it animates back and forth. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we want to change the color as well and then animate it. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this, paste it here and say self.bgColor is equal to color.gray, question mark. Well, we wanna change it to color.blue. And then if it's not, we'll change it to color.gray. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so we compile this, it all works, but where are the animations? We've watched this entire video with no animations. Well, we're finally around to it. Let's go ahead and check out those animations, okay? You'll see, you'll see it works just fine, but without animations. Okay, so all we need to do is go down here and say dot animation. And then what we do is throw this in here and we say dot basic, and we can choose a duration and a curve. So we can say something like two seconds and the curve will be dot ease in out. Now, here's the deal. I wanna show you how to use spring animations, but you can't really set a timer on the spring animations. So let's see if this works. You'll see it animates over, okay? I clicked it twice, so it animated back, but if I click it once, it's gonna take two seconds to change that corner radius and the background color. So really simple stuff, and uh, I'm liking the way it looks, okay? But let's talk about spring animations. If you say dot animation, and you throw in an animation, and you say dot, and you choose something like spring, you'll see there's no kind of duration, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make a video on spring animations, which I'll upload sometime tomorrow, and uh, we'll take a look at that. There's also a couple other ways you can animate by using state. You can even say something like with animation, and hit return here, and you can throw in this 
color here and it will animate it, right? Now, I haven't really checked out how this works yet, so I don't expect this to work at all. And it's a video I'm gonna be making two days from now, okay? So tomorrow's gonna be, tomorrow's gonna be all about spring animations. The next day will be about this with animation thing. But let's just go ahead and see if we can somewhat figure it out. I'm really interested with animation and I'll throw that. Okay, this actually looks very simple. So let's just throw in the same animation. Two seconds, ease in out. And let's throw this in here. Now it didn't compile before, so maybe it won't work. Cannot, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna get rid of that and see if it works. Oh wow, it actually worked. Swift UI is a very interesting kind of framework we got here. You'll see it works exactly the same. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I'll make another video on with animation, of course, like I just said. But yeah, that's how you use animations in Swift UI. Very basic stuff. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, drop a comment. Let's kind of talk, maybe form a, a friendship over the internet, right? So that we can learn about how to code in the Swift programming language and Xcode 11 and all these fancy things around iOS development. I love it. All right. I'll see you all in the very next video. Bye.